guys, how's it going? Today I want to give you a tour through my parents' garden. This is the garden that I grew up in and learned a lot in. We did put together a video tour of this garden exactly one year ago, um, but some things have changed, some plants have been added. There was one great big project that was done that I want to show you and update you on. Um, so we're just going to go through this garden and I'm going to just talk about some of the plants, some of the garden designs, um, kind of how it's evolved. I did talk a lot about it in our first tour, but it's been a year. We've gained a lot of new followers here on this channel which is awesome so maybe if you didn't catch that tour maybe this is your first time so we're actually not starting in the entryway because it's super bright and sunny up there but the sun is starting to go down so we decided to start down here where it's shadier and then hopefully by the time we make it up to the entry it's not quite as bright um, this is one of my favorite well I don't know how to say one of my favorite spots. They're all my favorite spots. I love this garden. It's on a hill, so it's all terraced. There's a whole bunch of different levels with built up rock walls. So it gives you this really cozy feel because it's very, um, it's easy to create rooms in this garden um, to create kind of different feels within each level of it, uh, which I really, really love. Our garden is a flat pancake. So to get that cozy feel, it takes a lot more work and a lot more time because you have to rely on maturity of plants a lot more. Um, so this space right here has winter gem boxes as a hedge, and this is a beautiful, beautiful hedge. If I could dig this up and take it home, I would, if they wouldn't miss it, but I think they would. Um, right inside here, we've got um, birch trees, a trio of them with a, a Celtic knot right here. And then inside, there are some, uh, let's see, Let's Dance hydrangeas. There's some more boxwoods, just a baby hedge starting at the moment. And then there's Alcamilla mollus or ladies mantle in kind of a hedge form here, kind of creating your barrier to um, designate your walkway around the center, uh, which ladies mantle is one of my favorite perennials. Um, it's such a beautiful foliage accent and they do bloom. You can see right here that they do have some really dainty, like kind of light yellow blooms on them. Um, and these are just going out of bloom. So most of the bloom stalks have been, been cut back. In each one of the corners, there are white and patience and blue lobelia. This is just a really great area to pop annuals in because you can change the look of this garden in terms of color every single year if you leave those spaces open for annuals. And then in the corners, on the obelisk, there is a sweet autumn clematis, uh, which is gorgeous. About mid to late summer, it starts to bloom and then blooms all the way through autumn. Um, and so if we keep going down this way, we go in, down into the lower yard, on our way, you can see some of the rock walls kind of poking out here. A lot of them are covered with stuff. So there's ivy, which is evergreen. So we've got a beautiful, just dark green, glossy wall to set off all of the plants. There are a lot of hellebores in this bed, which of course right now are in bloom, but it's absolutely glorious in the like late winter, early spring. You can see remnants of some of the blooms sitting here and they uh, self seed over here wonderfully. Like you can even see little baby hellebores in here coming up. So that's really fun to see those start to naturalize. There are also some hookahs in here, beautiful dark purple foliage, and there's a lot of brunera. So you can see this as another shade loving, really bold texture for a shady spot. I think I just said shade loving. Um, Hostas here. Here's another. This is a Jack Frost Brunnera right here with that heavy silver variegation. Um, and so it's just kind of a beautiful tonal green uh, kind of swath of plants right here. So let's go down this way and you can really see the layers here. There are two separate planting layers. Well, three, I guess, technically, if you count the ground. Um, so the top layer actually four if you count the very top. There's a, a Gatsby Moon hydrangea that I planted up there just a couple of years ago and I can see it's forming blooms so that's exciting. Next layer down there's more Brunnera and Daylilies. There's some uh, Areola Hakanakloa which is a Japanese forest grass. Isn't that a beautiful texture up there? I love that. There's also an Ashley Spirea you can see. It's got kind of a pink tinge to the leaves. And then as you move down, there's some amber colored flower carpet roses um, and those there's a ton of buds, but there's also a lot of beautiful color. And it looks like uh, they popped a few annuals in here. There's some coleus and potato vine, which as the season progresses, will get a lot bigger. will provide a really nice kind of darker. Oops, I'm starting to knock down the wall. <laughs> will create a nice darker kind of foliage accent. Uh, speaking of these rocks kind of falling apart, when I was little, there are some of those rocks that like 
bright like charcoal. And I remember peeling off pieces of these and going over to the concrete sidewalks that we used to have and just writing a bunch of stuff. So I'm probably partly responsible for the missing piece right here. Down below, there are some dogwoods down here that get beautiful red. I think they're a Baton Rouge um, dogwood. Beautiful red stems in the winter time. More hellebores, these are ivory prints right here. You can see how thick they get with bloom right there. Just gorgeous. And as we move this way, we've got a Japanese umbrella pine, which I just planted one in my garden this year, but it's only about this tall, so I can't wait until it gets a little bit taller. They have a really soft um, kind of texture. They're not pokey in the slightest, um, just a very kind of unusual look to them. Then there's some beautiful delphiniums. I do not know what variety these are, blue delphiniums, but I love these huge stalks. Coleus down below that looks like a trusty rusty, perhaps, not positive. And then a yellow flower carpet rose. The drip system is on. I can, see, I can hear the water dripping from those, those uh, baskets up top there. This right here, is a David flock, so this will get the big white blooms on it here fairly soon, um, and they last for quite a long time. Um, back planted with, it looks like a blood good Japanese maple or emperor one, it's one of the two of those. Um, there are lemony lace, just one lemony lace elderberry right here for some great texture. I mean, when you look at all these beds, just look at the different layers and the different textures. Even if there, it seems like there's a lot of green, um, it's all a little bit different and it really looks like you can see each individual plant because the texture is so different. There are ferns back in there, um, a new boxwood hedge that was planted not long ago with the uh, cone boxwoods on the end. This brick patio, my parents laid Oh, I don't even know how many years ago. I mean, it's been here as long as I can remember. They did nothing special to the ground. They just kind of raked it out, removed the sod, removed the sod, then raked it out, and then just slapped the bricks down. And it still looks pretty good. You can see it's like a little bit wavy in spots, but I think it gives it some charm and character. Uh, on the other side, there's a hedge of um, oak leaf hydrangeas. They're a munchkin variety, so they stay a little bit shorter, kind of a dwarf type. And then we've got the hookerellas, which Aaron and I came out here and planted not long ago. Those have some beautiful color that look great with the pink impatience that are right up front. And then there are patriot hostas sitting back behind the dove fountain right there, which provide in a shadier spot, they provide such a nice bright pop because of that heavy white variegation. And then there's this right here is a Twombly's red sentinel maple. Now this one here is not a Twombly's. Nope, there used to be a Twombly's right here. It got really, really winter damaged during our really bad winter two years ago. And so they had to top it and it looked okay for a little while, but it must have since um, decided that it didn't like this spot because this looks like it's a blood good, I think. And I kind of want to turn this way and go through this bed. I don't want to miss this side. Um, this right here is a type of ranuncula, and it's one of the ones I want to get a start of. There are a few plants here that I would love to get starts of that I can't find for sale, usually at garden centers. So I'll probably come steal some of this at some point. It kind of naturalizes and spreads, but it gets that sweet little yellow flower on it. Just early summer, usually. Looks like there is um, some yellow evergreen texture. There's a weeping birch, which if you can look in here, this is really cool. Look at this uh, trunk here. I remember when this was a baby. So you can create that. You can plant a, a kind of a whip of a tree, like a really small flexible tree, and you can kind of bend it and tie it to a stake. So you plant your tree and then you bend kind of the bottom of it and tie it to a stake right there. And then as it grows, you can tie the next section up and kind of create that snake look, which is really interesting. Uh, more Patriot Hostas and some White Impatience and it looks like a fuchsia basket up here on this pillar. And this is probably a really good idea. Sometimes you get some difficult planting areas like underneath spruce and pine trees. Hostas usually do really well in that sort of situation. But if you have a really difficult spot, this is a great thing to do. Just pop a fountain or a container or a pillar with something like this 
it's beautiful and interesting and then you don't have to worry about the ground and amending a bunch of soil and that sort of thing. This is CS. This is one of the kitties out here. Um, we've got another Japanese maple with some red foliage along with, I think this is a coral berry, but I don't know what variety it is exactly. Um, it's got a really nice delicate foliage on it. And then Lamium. And the Lamium, my mom keeps um, saying she's gonna take it out because it's too much of a thug, but I think it's beautiful. I think it's nice sometimes not to have such a jumble of plants all the time in every spot, but to have a huge big drift of something like this is restful to look at to me. You know, you can go from a really um, like kind of intricately layered area and then if you have something like this or you know grass acts like that to me too if you can have a nice grass area between some of those things it provides some rest and I think that's what this does another Japanese maple right there I think this is a katsura if I I think that's right I have one of these at home and it looks very similar um, there are some poet's wife roses right here oh that's a lilac that I skipped right there Another variety of lamium with a white bloom. The Poet's Wife Rose, which is a David Austin. And then there's an Ito uh, Peony, which is, uh, it's got a light yellow. In fact, it looks a lot like this color right here when it's blooming, except for the blooms are just absolutely huge. Um, so that's been done for a little while. We've got variegated goldenrod and then a beautiful succulent planter which never gets any water. That thing has to just survive on its own and it's done great. I think my mom planted that two years ago now and it's just done great. There are, now I don't know, my mom could tell me the name of this rose. She tells me every single year. It's this old romantic like um, heritage rose that you deadhead and it like it blooms continually throughout the season and it's just beautiful. It looks kind of like a Morden blush to me. Maybe that's what I have more than blush though. Mine don't look like this quite. So I'm not sure. Uh, more lobelia down below, day lilies. There's some um, rocket, orange rocket barberries back in there. Uh, more annuals. It's just so fun to see this every year to see what different things that they choose. And I do the same thing in our garden. I choose different annuals to go in different, different spots. So there's some coral geraniums and blue lobelia. So now I'm gonna take off down this way um, and then I'll stop where we kind of started down there. I absolutely love this view. I love to see the lines of the grass and I like that you can see the fountain in the distance running. It like beckons you, it calls you to come down, which I think is really important. There's not a huge amount of busyness in terms of hardscape down here. And I think that's important not to do too many things. Um, it would be easy to do a lot of big, beautiful concrete pieces because they're gorgeous. Um, but I think it can be overdone. Um, so I think this is just really, really pretty it's got the right balance so let's move down here and i'll pick up kind of where i started in this bed so i do want to talk about these trees because i love them there is a paper bark maple right here look at how interesting the trunk is talk about winter interest i absolutely just i love it i have to keep myself from peeling it because that's like half of the interest right there um, but it's just the color, the texture there, and the leaves are pretty, but I love it for the dark, you know, the dark trunk with that interest. Right across the way, there's a per Persian parosha, which these grow incredibly slow. This tree's been here forever, but the fall color, the show you get in, from this tree is incredible. It's like this kind of electric display of fall colors and you get multiple from the same tree, like multiple colors. So this is one that I need to figure out where to add one in, in my garden. And that's what's so fun about this garden. It's so mature and there's so many things that are gorgeous that you can look at something and kind of see what it might look like in your garden. Like, oh, that's what the Persian Parosha looks like after 20 years. So I can kind of plan for that. Um, and this spot is really, really fun because the layering, oh, I haven't even seen this. See, now I haven't been here in a couple of weeks. So seeing some of these little addition, there's a, a coleus basket hanging on a, a beautiful, this looks like an antique holder. That's really cute. But I really like the layering in this area because of the iris in the back. You can see that just strong vertical structure back there. Um, and I think that's a Katsura tree that's coming up from kind of from the middle of that drift. Then you come down to an ivory halo dogwood. This is a tree peony that gets the big purple blooms on it. 
And then there's some hardy geranium down here. There's mums that come up in the fall with their blooms, like right in here are some mums. And then some nice big tall roses in the back, which I don't know what variety those are, I'm sorry, but you can see some purple campanulas popping out like just here and there, and I really like that. So right in front of me here, so across the kind of walkway from that flower bed is another tiered rock wall. The top level has a boxwood hedge, which is enclosing a beautiful little garden up there, which we'll look at in a minute. Next level down are hostas, which my mom and dad just moved all of these uh, variegated ones from an area where a tree toppled over in the, the wind. And that tree was what was casting shade on the area. So all of a sudden it was full sun. So they kind of had to scramble and figure out where to put all of the shade loving plants. So they've dug them up and moved into various locations and that's where the hostas ended up. And I actually think that that was, that was perfect. Like it was almost a needed texture and color right there. Um, so the last layer down here, uh, there are some amber flowered, amber colored flower carpet roses. Again, kind of like a repeat from the other side, um, but there are a bunch, this area has become much more shady since these were planted. So eventually these will need to probably be moved um, or removed for other shade loving things. I think it gets just enough sun though to in the morning to bloom a bit, uh, but there are some shade loving annuals in here. These beautiful coral begonias. Look at those beautiful flowers and some coleus with some really nice dark variegation, which is kind of needed in this area. And then a ton of Jack Frost Brunnera. And this is a linden tree right here, a Redmond linden, which we just planted right in front of our gazebo. Um, so there's the Brunnera and lemony lace uh, elderberries right behind. And you can just see the beautiful rock walls that just is so nice and it just creates this nice little cozy space. There is some Baptisia in here too. Uh, and I'm not sure what variety, but it's looking like it's coming up there. And then the fountain area. Oh, I do have to say that this little opening with some gorgeous ghost ferns right here uh, leads down to where we, where my garden was, whoops, I hit my mic, sorry, where my garden was when I was a little girl. Um, it's not much of anything now. It's kind of the orchard area. Um, so I had my garden down there. We had a bunny hutch. And this is a gate that I actually bought at an antique store and my mom stole it. <laughs> she likes it right here. It actually fits really well. Uh, we talked about how we need to trade furniture like every two years, like yard furniture, so we don't have to buy as many things. Um, and that way we always feel like we have new stuff. So I guess this is the beginning of it. So I guess I need to pick something out of her garden to take home to mine tonight. Another Japanese maple. It has been the spring of Japanese maples for both my parents and me. We've both added a lot more because they add so much beautiful color that stays throughout the season. As long as we can provide it with some afternoon protection, they do really well. This is a Sester's Blue Spruce, which um, had a huge snowball bush growing kind of into the side of it, and that's why it's shaped this way. The snowball bush died during our really hard winter, um, so this was fine, except for it shaped kind of funny. Um, but over time, I, I don't know, it gives the garden character, and we wouldn't want to remove something like that just because of that little issue. You know, in time, this Japanese maple will fill in the area, things will kind of grow and fill in, and you probably won't notice that anymore. Um, so this space right here was created not that long ago. Um, uh, I don't want to say like maybe five, six years ago. Uh, so there are some, I think these are some David Austin roses. There is a tag, the Lady Gardener, which I just brought some home to my garden today. I had them in my past garden and I love them. Look at the delicate pink of this rose. That just looks antique and beautiful to me. Uh, in the back, these are either Boscobel or Jubilee Celebration. Hold on. Yeah, these are Boscobel roses right here. Uh, and then there's a place to sit and kind of enjoy the area. This is a Pinky Winky Hydrangea Standard. And then another, this is a Twombly's Red Sentinel Maple. I think these are Chokeberries right here, which create, this is a specific variety that stays really low and creates a really nice hedge. Um, then a Gold Nine Bark. Another Hydrangea on Standard. And then you've got your rock wall with your boxwood hedge right there. Beautiful. Hakanakloa. So this garden, as of this spring, is missing two, yeah, two huge trees. There was one right here and one right here. They were willow leaf pears and they were massive and they created this huge arch 
over this whole area and there was like no reason why they should have died and they did and that's what happened to mine in my past garden they lived here forever and they just decided both of them that they were done so they have come out which has changed the structure of this garden but that's kind of how gardening is nothing is permanent and it's always changing and you're never done um, which for me is great and for my parents is great because it's what we love to do um, but it does make you rethink areas it does like change your light require you know your light so the light re requirements for your plants then changes and you have to move things and um, this garden has really kind of evolved since when I was a kid when I was a kid there was irises here and it's one of the only flowers that was in the garden when we moved in and the only space uh, spots where there was flowers and those stayed here for a really long time my mom did a lot of flowers from seed when we were little um, and so this was kind of the cutting garden but now it it's still kind of a cutting garden, but there's a lot of other interest in here. Um, the roses are around the uh, pillar are great. I can see the drip running. That makes me happy because we ran the drip system to this container and the hay racks. So to see them running and working is really nice. There's some salvia in here. There's just so much hookahs, hostas, geraniums, just so much interest. Delphiniums. And then this is one my dad brought home. This is a Heliopsis with a gorgeous variegated leaf. And he just was determined to have this in the garden somewhere. And I think this is a great spot. I don't know the stats on this. I don't think it gets too big. So I think it'll be a really interesting plant to see grow throughout the season. Let's go through here. We've got a filbert, uh, I can't remember the name. It's got a purple leaf instead of a green and a uh, Sutherland gold el elderberry here. So these two gardens, there's two layers here. There's this one and one right below me was where we had vegetable gardens when we were kids. Um, not ours, but my parents had vegetable gardens. So like one would be tomatoes, one would be corn, and then they would switch them. Um, they always did something different in them every single year. But there is a hedge of Burgarten sage here and echinaceas. I think these are big sky sundown and they're just starting to put on their blooms right now. But if you look in between each one of these green mountain boxwoods, you can see one of the seasons. So there are four, four seasons, there are only three statues. So what I'm thinking happened is that the nursery, maybe one of the seasons got knocked over or something. And that's how we um, used to get a lot and still get a lot of our pieces is if something gets damaged, we're like, well, we can just put that damaged side toward you know the back of something so you don't see it and we'll put it in our own garden. So I'm thinking maybe that's what happened here. And then if you, if you think thin, you can go through the walkway. These boxwoods have gotten really big. There are viburnums in each one of the ends of each of these beds. In the winter time, they have beautiful red berries. Right here, there were some discs of white blooms that have these little berries starting to form that turn bright red and they're just gorgeous. More Burgarten sage and hydrangeas. A couple of juniper lollipops. climbing rose. And now we're heading up toward the vegetable garden area. So there are grapevines right here, which kind of create your enclosure um, for really both areas. They used to come all the way over to here. There was a post right here with a, another grape. Um, and so that's since been removed and it's just a really nice kind of, you can see them maybe better from this side. You can see how old they are. Like, look at the trunk. That's pretty crazy, but they bear like crazy every single year and they are a seedless grape. So look at this right in here. You can see all of the big bunches, clusters starting to form in there. And they're just a beautiful texture. The leaves are gorgeous. Um, and then this fountain was one that was damaged. It had a huge crack in it. It used to be up in another area of the garden and it worked for quite a number of years. And then I think, yeah, you can see a huge crack in here and it just became uh, got to a point where it just couldn't be repaired anymore so um, they put it down here planted it up with some flower carpet roses and you're good to go it's still a beautiful uh, kind of focal point down here and it kind of needed it there needed to be something that was a little weighty down here and this just works perfectly so let's go over here to the entrance to the vegetable garden and right now this is a wall of honeysuckle and it smells just glorious right now it's all in bloom So this vegetable garden is just 
I love it. So it's kind of sunken. It's got the uh, fence all the way around it and there's steps down into most of it except for this side right here. So it gives you this feel like it gets full sun for most of the day, but you still feel like it's protected in here and it is protected more from wind. It's a little bit more protected from frost just from the way it's positioned. Um, and it's got a beautiful network of uh, raised beds. So these are all in the shape of triangles and then they form kind of in the end like a big square on this side. And then there are two long rectangular beds and then there's a repeat of this configuration on the other end. You can see the sweet peas here. Oh. Oh, which are so fragrant. Those are beautiful. I did not grow any sweet peas this year and now I'm regretting it because these are really nice. And so there's the other configuration there and there's just all kinds of stuff going on in here. I mean, there's potatoes and tomatoes, onions, lettuce, cabbage, corn. I'm seeing nasturtium, zucchini, just all kinds of things. Right here, this is for my dad. These are some gladiolus right here. My dad loves glads. I uh, don't know what color those are, so that'll be fun. And it looks like some dahlias right here. And we've got a, a potting shed. And this is a fun, fun potting shed. I love it in here. It was all made from recycled materials um, from an old building that was being torn down. Um, and so they kind of rescued some of the materials and brought it here and had this built. Um, but there's just all their like tomato I don't, you know, you could go through each one of the things, but there's just all kinds of stuff in here, rocks and stakes and soil and containers. And then there's just this little, my mom created this little, um, she calls it a still life right here, succulent kind of still life with some beautiful capital um, pillars and pots. I love it. And then there are two rows of raspberries. When we moved in, there were Let's see, one, two, three, four. There were five rows of raspberries. There was one here, this one, one in between, this one. Nope, there were four. There were four rows of raspberries. They took two out because as you know, raspberries grow absolutely enormous. And they were so big that we couldn't walk in between each row without getting attacked by those thorny canes. Um, and this is so much more comfortable. So these are, were here when we moved in and along with maybe the irises and two trees. That's the only thing that was really here and they kept it all uh, and have added a whole lot more. When we moved into this place, it was waist high weeds. It was a mess. Um, it was just, it was a lot of years of work, a labor of love to get it to this point right now. The window boxes look beautiful. I do not know what kind of verbena that is, but it's got a really neat look. It's almost like a chartreuse green with a purple tip on it really interesting. And then there's some uh, petunias, uh, begonias, and coleus in there. And then tucked in behind the potting shed, which I have uh, showed you guys this in a previous video before, there is a raised bed, which I'm just getting ready to build one very similar to this at our house. Um, it's got a glass door, an old door on it. That's the lid. So it's kind of a greenhouse effect and you can grow things in here. Even when there's snow on top of this, it retains enough heat to grow greens and like spinach and lettuce. And then here there's dill and thumbergia, borage. It looks like some curry in here. Um, and then I don't know what this is. Is it that hyssop? I don't know. It's pretty. <laughs> There's honeybees all over it. Okay, let's go up onto the deck. Iceberg roses, there are four right here. There's one planted to the right and then one on either side of the arbor, which my dad built from uh, wood we got up in the hills. And then there's one more right down there. And I think they're beautiful. They bloom for such a long time. I've got some icebergs, they're behind our fireplace. Um, and they're actually climbers, I found out. That's the reason why I couldn't keep them under control, but they don't have anything to climb on like this. It would be neat to build something back there that they could ramble on and really kind of like meet their full potential. So I think instead of going up to the deck right away, we'll just start here and kind of circle our way around. So this area here has got uh, hookahs down there, some kind of um, orangey chartreuse green ones. Um, there is some phlox there and Solomon seal. This is a really beautiful plant to put in a part shade area or a shade area that has kind of the arching, arcing kind of look to it. Uh, and they just stay so nice throughout the whole season. It's just a, one of my favorites. All of them are my favorites. Um, there's a lot of centauria in here or mountain bluet. I just saw bloom. If you can look right here, 
This right here is a Centauria. They're really interesting. This bloom is a little bit faded, but they're an absolute garden thug. And if you do not keep them in check, they will spread everywhere. And this has been kept in fairly good check. It was let to like kind of run rampant for a while, but it fills this whole back area. So if you have an area that's just like tough to grow something in, you just want something pretty to fill it in, get Centauria because it'll do it for you. Um, this is, I can't remember. It has a, has a stalk with orange kind of berries on it. I have a start of it in my garden. I'll think of it later, but it kind of has a tropical elephant ear look to it. Dang it. Duh. Alum? Maybe? Maybe? Uh, coral flower carpet roses here around the fountain, which this was a new fountain, I think, this spring. Um, they put this one in or last year. I can't remember, but it's got a perfect sound. I love it. Oh, and I do have to um, mention the golden smoke bush back here. Isn't that a glorious looking smoke bush? Especially when the sun hits it right now in the evening, it just looks like it glows. It's a perfect backdrop to that fountain. Um, back here, there's a hedge of boxwoods that actually goes all the way down, even behind the evergreens. There were nine barks here for a lot of years, but then it started to not get as much sun, so you have to adapt. Um, this is a spruce. Uh, there's a debate as to what kind of spruce this is in our household. Um, my parents say it's a tallymore, and I don't believe it. I don't, I don't think tallymores get this big, but I'm not sure. So it's beautiful and it looks gorgeous with Christmas lights. Uh, this is a Japanese anemone right here and they bloom white. And this is another one that will try to take over. In fact, you can kind of see them out in the grass a bit and it does it at my house too. They kind of start to creep out, um, but there's such a giving perennial and in, uh, in the fact that they um, add so much fall interest, like late summer fall interest to your garden um, that we kind of put up with that. Uh, some yellow yarrow and lamb's ear. And then these are Tuscan sun roses that provide this nice bright pop. And they are right in front of a big drift of uh, David flocks. So big drift of big white blooms that'll come out here pretty soon. Um, and then there's some geranium here, hardy geraniums, more lamium, and we'll just kind of pop back into this corner real quick. This is a chocolate vine. It's a type of eupatorium. And I love the texture of this one. It's got beautiful dark colored stems, like burgundy stems. And I think that's one of the things that's most striking to me about it. Um, and then there is some clematis in here, kind of like the stand by, me, stand by Me. This is not a Stand By Me, but it's very, very close. Bushy Bell clematis maybe. Boy, I need to brush up on some of my names around here in this garden. Um, there's some more ladies mantle right here. Uh, with a procumbens blue spruce and sweet woodruff, which is a beautiful ground cover, which is another one that will kind of just creep its way around. Um, these are the five autumn frost hostas that Aaron and I brought out here, and they are doing so great, and they're such a gorgeous, just bright spot in this flower bed. This is a white tree peony and a blue bird, Rosa Sharon. So it gets nice blue flowers and it actually does really well. It doesn't get an enormous amount of sun here and you would think uh, Rosa Sharon, they need full sun to perform the best. It actually does really well. Um, there are some delphiniums in here. You can see they're about ready. Look at this. They're huge. About ready to put on its blooms. Uh, and then some iris. These are the black pearl um, hookahs that I gave, I gave my mom a flat of them last year and they look beautiful up here with the pink impatience, um, the great expectation hosta. I actually got my parents one of these on a trip and they planted it right here, which is so fun. And we always get each other either plants or Christmas ornaments, usually on trips. Um, this is an Arnold's Promise Witch Hazel. So beautiful, bright yellow blooms. I don't want to skip the deck because there's some pretty things up here. So let's just run up here really quick. You might recognize this from a video like I don't know, two, three years ago where I came up and planted it up with all white flowers. I love this. It looks like, this almost looks like a mum. Um, there's some helichrysum and coleus, impatiens, creeping charlie, and a dark colored potato vine. That's a really pleasing blend of plants to me. And down in here, it's just kind of a jumble of violas and sweet woodruff and hellebores. And I just, I like that in some areas where there's just some kind of things left to go wild a little bit. Um, I like this little kind of vignette. There's a couple of Japanese maples and creeping charlies, hostas in these two pots that all came back from last year. Like they didn't move them or anything. They stayed right here. And this is how they came back this spring, 
which for having something in a container, especially a Japanese maple, you would kind of maybe expect a little bit of like struggle, none with those. And then this is where, oh my goodness, I haven't even noticed these. Look at these fuchsias. Oh, all white ones. I bet you my mom took all of these from the garden center before I even had a chance to see them. <laughs> those are beautiful. Um, and then we've got some uh, euphorbia up here, coleus, begonias, really nice. But this is where my family hangs out a lot of the time, right up here. I know it's kind of sunny and shady. It's probably hard to see, but this is just a perfect sitting area in the evening because we can watch the sun set. Um, and we've spent a lot of evenings and mornings out here together. I remember growing up like in high school, even we would all wake up earlier than we needed to go somewhere. And we all drank coffee even through high school. And we'd be out here on the deck with my parents and we'd all just be like hanging out and chatting. And um, those are some really fun memories for me. Oh, and this is the container from Christensen's nursery that I got my mom um, at the Seattle flower show. And I got a matching one for myself. Right now, mine has a flower arrangement in it, like fresh cut flowers, and this one she planted begonias in. So now we're gonna be looking at the entry. I'll talk about these first because these are striking. These are guacamole hostas right here with Mount Bruno boxwoods, which after the first tour of the garden that we did a year ago, um, I got a lot of questions about these because this is a boxwood at full maturity. So again, they're called Mount Bruno. They grow usually about a foot and a half by a foot and a half, maybe a tiny skosh bigger. Um, so they're really easy to maintain in this kind of area, like as small spheres or as a really small hedge. This is a purple ghost Japanese maple that um, Aaron and I helped my parents plant one night really late. I think it was storm. It was either stormy or windy or something, but it was in one of those big like wood box planters and it was really tough because it's right on the edge of a rock wall like level and I remember trying to get this one planted um, years ago uh, but it's absolutely beautiful it's grown a ton but I like the architectural airy look of this one and I think it was one that was kind of struggling in its nursery can so it needed to get out and a lot of times like I have one of those in my garden right now that it just needed to come to a garden and just be planted um, and oftentimes they bounce really quickly and sometimes they're the best shaped ones, like they're the most interesting ones to look at. Uh, there's a little like kind of swoop of hookahs here with hellebores. And then there's that um, oak leaf hydrangea that we could see from down below earlier. Okay, so now we'll go to the entry garden. So right here, there's a Twombly's Red Sentinel Maple that just glows when the sun hits it right. And there's a um, little trellis here with a honeysuckle that smells really good. So as you're walking in, because this is the entrance right here. So as you're walking in, you get a really nice smell, like a whiff of that honeysuckle. Um, but if you stand and kind of look toward me, you can see what the entryway looks like. <laughs> Let me move out of the way so you can see. You can either go right to the house or down into a garden, or you can go left out toward the swimming pool, which is the direction we'll head. There's some Big Daddy Hosses, which is what we just planted at the um, Project Dove, right in front of one of their residences. This is an example of Big Daddies that are at their more mature size. So you can see how big those little tiny four inch hosses that we planted will get like this, which is really exciting. Um, so right here, a little hedge of boxwoods backed by mums, which are gorgeous in the fall, and this huge level of delphiniums, which my mom and I had several phone calls over the last couple of weeks because we've had such bad windstorms. And so we call each other and um, I'm like, what are you doing? She said, I'm out staking up my delphiniums. And I'm like, I'm doing the same thing. Um, so we just like, we're struggling with this because we love delphiniums so much um, that we are struggling to keep them to stay upright. Um, there's a container right here. This is an old iron urn on a pedestal, um, which gets deep shade and hardly ever has to be watered. Um, and then there's some fragrant stock down in here, which is an annual in our area. And I do love, I almost missed it, but I do love this little drift of blue uh, petunias down there. And a rhubarb, just in case. <laughs> just in case you need some rhubarb it's got a beautiful structure and i love in fact i planted three of the same variety this is a victoria rhubarb look at how huge those leaves are i planted three of these in a container this spring because i wasn't sure exactly where i wanted them to go in a flower bed this is what it looks like when you put them in a flower bed it's such a gorgeous huge bold texture this is a great big old lilac and oh, the tricolor beach, which you can probably see if we come out here a little bit and kind of turn back on it because the light's hitting it on this side. 
The tricolor beech has the beautiful pink foliage. Um, and when you find them, you'll depending on who the grower is or what kind of soil they've been grown in, it'll come in all different kinds of colors of pink. I have a small one that I planted last year that's more along the lines of this one. It's got the lighter pink. And then I planted a big one this spring that's got deep pink. Um, so it's really interesting to see the differences you can get out of the same cultivar of tree. Um, and then right in front of me is a swimming pool. Lots of hours of family entertainment out here. Um, they put this in when I was a junior in high school, um, and this was pasture. In fact, right here where the telephone pole is, uh, there was a fence. The fence went all the way down here, um, and there was just like weedy pasture right here. The cows could come right up to this area. Um, so they had this spot built up and the pool put in, and then we'll walk in just a second down below so you can see the rock walls that were built to kind of make this area a little bit higher. Um, but this was something that my parents always dreamed of having out here. They wanted to have uh, one for their grandkids, which they have now. Um, and so a lot of our holidays, a lot of weekends and evenings are spent here, either around the pool or in the pool or around the fire. So um, we do a lot of fires out here in the summertime so you can get out of the pool and go right by the fire. But there used to be, when the pool was very first built, there was an excellent view of the um, town because we're on a hill out here. So you could see the whole valley, but you kind of, with the swimming pool, you kind of want it to feel a little bit private. So there are a row of royalty crab apples right here, which um, have provided a lot of privacy. It actually helps a lot with wind too. And then also there's some Spartan junipers right at the very end of the pool which um, the tag says that they only get five to six feet wide and 10 to 15 feet tall. Those are much bigger than that. Um, and those are even shorn. Uh, so if they really like their spot, it's possible that plants can, can get a little bit bigger on occasion. I've seen that a lot with junipers in our area. And there are two hummingbirds flying around right above the water. <sighs> I've seen a couple hummingbirds in our garden so far this year. I hope I see more. So this area down here is a little bit more kind of untamed. Um, they bring a lot of plants home that have been damaged in shipment and just pop them down here or um, like plants they want to test out. Um, so it's not really designed as heavily, which is kind of fun. It's nice to have like more of a wooded area, I guess you could call it. Um, there's all kinds of stuff down here. Um, this is a Zelkova tree. Uh, there's a pine and an elderberry right in front of me, right by the pasture gate, uh, blue spruce here. Uh, this is an alder tree, which I love because the alders are really good in really wet areas, but they also, whoops, I'm dropping them. They also produce these tiny little cones that are really, really fun to use in wreaths. So I come out here with my bags and like load up with alder cones every single year. So here are the layers of this rock wall. There's uh, some coral flower carpet roses on the bottom. Uh, hid coat, I think, or Munstead lavender along the second level, and then barberries on the third level, and then the fourth is the, the pool deck. This is a pear of some kind, and then a spruce, a pyracantha right here, which gets beautiful bright orange berries in the fall, and it's pretty huge, and there's usually a, I don't know, is it called a warren, a warren of rabbits, is that right? A den? I don't, I'm not sure, but usually rabbits live in there. And then this whole area is just left to, like there's some um, native grasses in there, um, hollyhocks. It's just a really kind of beautiful, more wild area. Okay, so now I'm gonna walk up the same way and we're gonna go out by the barns and I'll show you some of the landscaping out there. So it's still kind of sunny out here, but I wanted to show you another entrance to kind of the pool area with this really pretty walk through arbor. Um, there's some uh, climbing roses on it and clematis the beautiful arb spirals and then the annuals down below. So there's some geraniums and then that kind of sky blue petunia. And then the barns are out this way. There's two of them. There's a barn for the sheep and a barn for the chickens. And whoo, skunk, it smells like skunk out here. Look at the view. That's the entire reason why my parents bought this place. This place was uh, not even close to what it looks like now. It was so like the, the house itself um, was built by the owner and it was built very poorly and they had it to allocate a ton of their budget to repairs to the inside of the house so they weren't able to do a ton to the outside for very, for a lot of years 
uh, and they knew that that's kind of how it was going to go, but they bought it because they saw the potential in the um, kind of terrace hillside kind of garden, but also you can't like you can't put a price on that. It's just absolutely fabulous. Um, this is Munstead Lavender out here, and there are a couple maple trees. So there's one here and one on the other side, and then there are just a bunch of David Austin roses around here. So there's three here, and I can't remember the names of all of them. I think, boy, these might be Evelyn's. <laughs> I don't know. These might be Ambridge Rose, though, too. They're not Evelyn's. Maybe I'll ask my mom and we can pop them up on the screen. Um, but these have got gorgeous color and a really nice scent. Boxwood hedge. And I love the barn doors too. They're kind of like old antique doors. <clears throat> it's just a little bit more rustic out here. Um, this is where the chicken barn is. So more lavender. There's some, uh, those look like Lady Emma Hamilton roses right there. They've got more of the deep apricot color. Uh, more lavender and boxwood hedges and more roses. So it's just a little bit more simple in terms of plant choice, but I think it makes it really effective and you don't really need a whole lot out here when you have, you know, that to look at. And this is the exterior chicken run, which they've just seeded with some stuff and it's all coming up. So they'll be letting the chickens out here soon. Um, and I don't see any of the chickens. They must be already in the barn to roost. So now I want to go up onto the driveway and explain what project, the big project that they did this year and give you an update because we did plant some super tunias and purple fountain grass out here not that long ago. So this is the last area I wanted to show you, uh, mainly because one, I wanted to update you on a project we did about a month ago. Erin and I came out here and planted up these 12 really large containers with purple fountain grass and then eight super tunia vista snowdrift, which is a new super tunia vista that's coming out next year and we just wanted to try it out and see how it works in containers. I've got some in the ground at home, so we'll kind of gauge how they both do in both kind of situations. But like, um, like I said, I think uh, we planted these about a month ago and they're looking really great. They've really bulked up and filled in and they're starting about starting to want to spill over the sides. I mean, I think that'll happen probably in the next week or so. Um, so I'm really thrilled with how they're doing and I just wanted to show you that. And also wanted to talk to you a little bit about this area because this spot is the one that's had the biggest transformation um, since our last tour. Now, if you saw the video with the containers, you already know all this information, but if you missed that one, I'll just explain quickly that there used to be a ditch right here where I'm standing. There was like a really rough looking landscape on the other side with just like white native dirt and some bunch grass and weeds and stuff like that and then the ditch and then it came up into a really narrow driveway the driveway was about i want to say like about right here um, and so that's as much driveway as you had and it was really tight um, and a little bit scary because the driveway is really steep and it would be really easy to <laughs> to get your car into the ditch. They had the water pipe, the ditch filled in, and then the whole area smoothed out, new gravel put in. They planted 14 red point maples, which is one of my favorites. We have um, not quite 14, but we've got a lot of them at our house that we planted uh, last year and then this year as well. Um, so in between each one of those maples are the containers. And I just think it gave it such a beautiful, fresh look. Also a brand new fence. Um, so they had the fence built and my mom came out and stained it the black color, which is a really similar, if not the same color um, that we used on our garden fence, our garden picket fence. And I used it because they used it on this side, on their fence, um, which they're probably gonna be repainting or restaining this year. Um, but that's where I first saw that color where I really, really loved it. Um, so anyway, and that's something they're gonna be working on, like as they start replacing fence sections here and there, they'll be kind of going to that style. And it goes all the way to the end. And on the end two panels, there are two climbing English roses. So that'll cover that whole area down there. And then beyond, you can see the beautiful uh, field. It's just a really pretty area. So anyway, guys, that is the tour of my parents' garden for 2019. I hope you enjoyed it. I love coming here. It's one of the places where I get a lot of inspiration. It's actually the only place, one of the only places that I can like truly relax. It's such a peaceful environment um, and I, I really love it. I have a lot of good memories here. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Bye.